Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Candidly with Coffee. Welcome back. Welcome back. Cheers. Monday by the time you guys hear this, but it's football yep. Sunday. Yes. Go Niners. Okay. Are you good? Yeah, I want to give my shout okay. out to the Niners. Got you. Good. Okay. good now? I'm going to okay. drink my coffee. No, thank you. I got my dollop with my espresso double shot of Nespresso Espresso. Nespresso Espresso, yeah. You kind of call it, you. <laughs> I'm going to make you mad right now, but I noticed that you say espresso. <laughs> It's espresso. It's espresso. But you say espresso sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> espresso. I want some espresso. Um, anyways, I am, you know, on the conclusion here of my birthday weekend. Birthday weekend. Birthday girl. Yeah, it was good. It was a good birthday weekend. Yeah, you did a lot. I did. Nothing. I did a lot for like me. Miss Miss No Plans. I had plans. So we did um, Mastro's. Let's recap. We left people off at Mastro's and the butter cake. And you guys, the butter cake li lived up to all the hype. Ten yep. out of ten. And then some. Ten out of <clears throat> mother effing ten. Every person that's cake. had it there, they always mention it like, make sure you get that butter cake. I, I think I'm, I'm officially now a lover of cake because I didn't like cake. Oh, my goodness. So I never ordered. I thought, okay, butter cake. I would now. never order a piece of cake. You know, I'm beginning to learn in my 47 years of age that never say never. Yeah, right. And open your open your mind a little bit to try new things. The truth. Because geez. Never say never, you're right. Every bit of my meal, I I literally I do not eat like a delicate flower, let's just say that. I, I noticed that we had two grown men, you and, and like Mo, who's a big burly guy. Yeah. And I cleaned my plate be before both of you. Really? I sat there watching you guys eat going I have problems. I eat way too fast. I eat like a man. You're a fat girl. I you am. Who loves I, cake I, now. A hundred percent. Now I'm truly a fat girl who loves cake. <laughs> no offense, you guys. We're just no, talking. That's okay. Smack. That's okay. I yeah. am though. I am too. I, I have am. that fat boy inside me, and I have been 100%. so. I could talk shit. And I about would myself. be. I would be if I didn't watch it. I mm -hmm. know me. I it makes two of us. Even We're Lisa both. was sitting next to me, my cousin, and she was like, "God damn, you eat so fast." You know, she eats like a normal human. Like a woman. You know, she eats delicately. Yeah. She doesn't eat a large volume of food. Yeah. I'm a nutcase, man. I ate it all. But it was delicious. You know, I I knew it was my birthday weekend. I had a, a few extravagances, but I didn't go crazy. You know, I didn't binge or anything like that. I, I thought about a time where I didn't believe you when you were like, yeah, I could eat a large pizza, cheese to myself. I was you like, thought I was I just, looked at you like, yeah, I know you you're a hundred pounds soaking away. Get the F out. You're I just know. trying to sound cool. Yeah, yeah you could do no. it. no. No, you I can put sadly. It down. Mary ate a burrito before me one time in San Francisco. We we're both starving. You, yeah, you didn't think I would eat the whole thing, and you, you like looked at you, you looked at it. me. Were you? Uh, let me ask you something, <laughs> truly, because we had just started dating. Did that turn you off? Were you like, no, oh, that's a little. I was like, no, I like. She likes to eat. I like that. <laughs> I don't like. Real quick, not that off topic. I don't like girls who pick at their food and order the cleanest on their first to get the and, and then don't eat it. To me, I'd be more. You know what they do? They go home. They go home. Let's be honest, and they go through the drive through. Yeah. Come to on. me, I would Come be on. more like, okay. like, obviously, Master's was an expensive yes. dinner. It's it an is. expensive dinner. It's a treat, for sure. Minimum but, 100 per person. But I look, at, I, I look at it this way. I look at it like, at least you never look at me and say, like, God, I just, why did you order that? Like, we just wasted money. Like, that nope. never happens. Never. Not you know, with us. <laughs> you guys, you know what's so funny? There's <laughs> been many times when we have gone out to eat where the waitress will stop when we're ordering and say, you know, these portions are kind of large. You know, she'll kind of like try to talk us out. And we're like, no, 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 you don't understand. Yeah. We can eat. Like, we eat a lot. Remember I took a Madeira when we would weed. order? <laughs> I don't, yeah. though. I, I do. I don't smoke. If I, yeah. if you if did? I smoked, yeah. babe, you That's... wouldn't even be able to afford the dinner if I smoked. <laughs> That would be. That's why I stopped smoking. Yeah, it's insane. Because my appetite is. I can is, control it, but yeah, it does get you. It can open up floodgates. My appetite Dangerous. is too large. I don't need help. Okay, yeah. so I did. Um, one thing I did kind of control. I had one cocktail at that dinner. Then the next day, I did my Orange Theory workout. Orange Theory did a you know a birthday burn. They had a sign. Everybody said happy birthday. Just such a cool place. Like it's so one of the best things I did ever was joining Orange Theory. So I. 
owe that to Alyssa for getting a job there. And and, and you know what? It makes working out less dreadful because you enjoy it. The format's yeah. there. You don't have to think. That's hard sometimes. I have to think about what am I going to do today? Yeah. To that's, so if you struggle, like I'm, this, I'm saying this, you guys, I'm so serious. Okay. I do not get paid by Orange Theory. I'm not sponsored. If you struggle with consistency in the gym, not knowing what to do, lack of motivation, lack of accountability, joining Orange Theory takes care of all of those barriers. Yeah. It makes you accountable. You have to schedule it like a like an appointment. Uh, you yeah. don't have to think about it. Nope. Your workouts are do. switched up. You don't get bored. It's got a sense of community. It is worth every penny and then some. It is worth double. I would pay double. If I'm, if I'm balling one day, I'll probably enjoy Orange Theory. Just to have fun with it because I, li- I, li- I like that kind of stuff. I like getting pushed because yeah. I do that now. With the academy that I'm with now, CSA, and we do back class, and it's very similar. You got to work at their pace. I love yeah, that. I Push. love it. And I, um, for the local listeners, I love, yeah, yes, I am biased to the ones that my daughter runs, the Rose Garden location, the downtown San Jose location, because. You're, you're your child's biggest cheerleader. Be, no, well, it's because they're only, they have one owner. So those, it's one owner, two gyms. So it's very family style. It's not. Um, corporate. It's yeah. not corporate. It doesn't have a corporate feel. It doesn't have that. Cor- the employees don't look like the employees of a corporation. They look like employees like who love their job. Yeah, like robots. Yeah. Not to not to gas them, but I walked in a twenty four hour fitness the other day, yesterday with my boy Mike. You just use the restroom real quick and uh, robots. And you yeah. get in there, it feels like corporate. They're no not happy. No, 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 and no pride in their gym anymore. Right. I'm so glad I don't work for them, and I'm right. trying to blast them, but like, man, their caliber went down. Like yeah, that. and so, like, I was even telling Alyssa, like, man, you have a solid, because she's, you know, the head coach. I'm like, you have a solid group of coaches. Like, they're all very good. They're all different. Hard to find that. But and they the are. And the click. They're reliable. That's hard And to they're find too. very good at what they do. Like, I, you know, as someone who, like, I've managed people. I've been on the situation where you need to hire good employees. It is very difficult to hire good people. Yes. But somehow this... And I think I, I attribute it to the fact that it is a small, it's a small business feel, even though it, Orange Theory is huge, they're individually owned, but there's a lot of them that are owned by like one fitness conglomerate. And then there's some that are mom and pop where they own one or two gyms. So hers Gosh. is owned by one. Highly recommend checking them out because they're, they're very, very good. It was best decision I ever made as a fitness coach, as someone who knows how to work out. I put workout programs together for a reason, but my weaknesses are not pushing myself yeah. and the accountability. So Orange Theory fixes my weaknesses. And a lot yeah. of people have those same weaknesses. So and they give you a lot of challenges that yeah. you never thought you'd be able to do. Now that you're like, wow, I can do it. Like and if you running. can't, you know, it's cheaper than hiring a private personal trainer. So if you can't afford a private personal trainer, group fitness, specifically Orange Theory is a, is oh, a great option. That's the way to go. Yeah. Okay, so on to after the Orange Theory birthday burn that I did. It's my second annual birthday burn. I afterwards we went to um, Luna for a little cocktail. You don't say. Hour. Your favorite restaurant. I know. I went there twice in one day. Okay. Okay. The waiters were looking at me side eye last night. Yo. Um, so I went there, but I just had like the fruit and I had a cocktail, and then I went to visit my dad, and. Um, that was good. He was in a decent mood, which I love. You know, it's like, it's always a toss up. Like, oh, I hope he doesn't like not in a great mood. And mm-hmm. then kind of, do you, you know, takes me off my uh, good energy. Yeah. Yeah, but he yeah, was yeah. in a good mood. That's um, good. I, um, and then Alyssa and I went to Tyler Henry, which we talked about Friday. So now I'm going to tell you about my experience at Tyler Henry. We didn't actually get a reading, but man, blown away by the readings that he did do. He basically just does random readings in the audience, blown away by the stuff that he did. And I loved it. It felt extremely authentic. Because let me tell you this, even in situations where the person wasn't getting it, they weren't like, they're like, no, no. He didn't backpedal. He wouldn't be like, huh, okay, yeah. No, then it's not that. It must be that he didn't like backpedal. He was like, no, there's something there. And he would kind of continue to push. Like this one woman he was like no like i'm definitely seeing this blah 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 he's all you know are you with somebody else like is somebody with you um i'm seeing an l name and he said like her name and she goes yeah i'm with 
Lorraine, Lorraine is with, and he goes, okay, I need her up here. Like, you know what I mean? Wow. So he was connecting, and then he connected blew, the dots. It, there was, blew, it blew their mind away, I bet. And there was some He stuff brought them up there to the stage? Together. Oh, yeah, he brought, he did read. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought he did Not it from, like, the, the crowd or something. He, they went to a microphone. Okay, okay. But oh, wow. he, he, with this particular people, he said, listen, I'm going to give you guys a private reading. There's things that are coming through that I don't feel comfortable saying in front of the crowd, and he gave them a private read, and he, he said, I'll schedule you after the show for privates. But there was some Whoa. amazing stuff. I mean, it was crazy because there was one situation where some of the stuff Alyssa and I read about after, she goes, oh my gosh, remember when he said this? This is what it pertained to because it was actually a case where it was in the media. It was in the news. We found out after it was... A, do you remember... The 22-year-old city councilman from Fairfield that was mistaken identity was murdered over a fifty-dollar crystal meth deal. I think I remember hearing about that a little bit. Yeah, it was a mistaken identity. Uh, 22-year-old, he was killed. He was shot in the head, and uh, he came through, and his mom was in the audience. Whoa, damn! It was crazy, but obviously he didn't. It it didn't come out like that. Like we, yeah, Alyssa yeah, and I, yeah picked up on some details so we researched it after and we're like oh my gosh remember when he said this like this is what he was talking about it was crazy it was crazy let me just tell you guys you're a believer i'm a true believer i'm a true believer and and it made me think about the readings i had and it further validated the readings that i had mm -hmm. because of the way he explained how um how it works and how people come through and um yeah, it was it was very authentic, and the descriptions he had of people, it was crazy. He was like, at one time he's like, okay, I'm seeing this, you know, someone's coming through. He's like, she's tiny, she's so tiny, she's she's adorable, she's adorable, she's an older female. It's it's a name starts with a C, ends with a Z, but I can't pronounce it in the Filipino community. Oh, um, wow. She's a tiny lady. She's got like little veins on her hands. Like he was very descriptive, and you know, someone came up and said, you know that. Someone had raised their hand. They said the name, and and he got so many things right about the situation. She said, "My mom was very petite, tiny woman," mm -hmm. and then he said this, and I'll, I'll move on. But he said she wants to she wants to um, point out that she loved the sports send off. You guys did something with her. She loved sports, and you did something in her funeral related to sports and she loved that and and basketball and no the the, yeah. the daughter said we buried her with a 49er sock and a warrior sock she loved various sports oh wow and, and it was she was blown she was crying I and bet. after her reading she, she said was. i want you to know that because of this reading i could breathe again it was oh it just got me i was Damn. i cried the entire freaking Two and a half hours. Mm, makes me think of my mother, man. Damn. Because it was so validating because it made me think of my reading. And I remember when I had my reading with the, the Paranormal Emporium, in the reading, he brought up that my mom wanted to bring up, there was something about a book. She wanted to bring up this book. She keeps talking about her book. I'm like, my mom didn't read. My mom, she, she did. I don't even know if she knew how to read well, to be honest. Yeah. My mom just, I don't, I don't know. She the Bible, the like I didn't know yeah. what he was talking about. So Both. he kind of is like, okay, let's move on from this, but <clears> I want <throat> you to write it down and remember it. There's some significance with this book. And after the reading, it came to me what he was talking about. He was talking about in my mom's stuff in her purse was a red book, a red mm -hmm. booklet. Yeah. It was a calendar book that she didn't treat it like a calendar. She had random erroneous notes written throughout this book. That book proved to be very helpful for me mm. in dealing with her finances, paying bills, figuring things out, because I would look through the book and find random things in the book. Wow. And little tips and stuff. Yes. And little so that's treasure, what she was talking about tools. her book. Okay. Wow. And fast forward to make another validation. He was talking about how sometimes they give us information or they come to us in odd ways and we don't realize they're coming to us. They're helping us. Um, we need to like be more aware of that. And I know I talked about, I think I talked about it here on the podcast. Did I talk about how when um, AT&T, I couldn't get, my parents' internet went out yeah. recently and yeah. I, I had to answer two security questions. Yeah, you got them right. And I got them right. And, and I felt so good when I got him right. I felt so close to my mom in that moment. Yeah. 
And because I felt like, wow, like I must really know her to get it right. And I thought that was so cool. Well, when, when we were, after I got back from the reading yesterday and it made me think about the book again, I thought, you know what? I bet you anything that the password to her AT&T account and the answer to the security question is in the book. And it was there all along. In a year, it took me to figure to to finally answer those questions and get them right. So last night, when I got home, I pulled the I pulled the book down from my little memory box, opened it up, went through the pages, and somewhere in one of those months, it said AT and T, and it gave me answers. Damn. And I got chills. I got chills. I had never seen that before. It was like in a random page. And I thought the answer was here all along, but she gave it to me anyway, somehow, that day when I needed it, when I, when she knew I needed it because I was this close to having a meltdown. Yeah. It was just little things all day long. She put it in your mind to say those two things. And then to, and then to remember back and think the book, she was telling me like, Janine, the book is going to help you, the book. Mm Mm-hmm. And. So there's a lot of information in that book. There's a lot of information in the book. The recipes? That helped me. There's a recipe the in there. Is there? Yes. You gotta make it. There's you a pie it. crust recipe in there. It's probably good. There is um, phone numbers of people that I needed to reach out to, like her two friends from Massachusetts. It's. Oh, it you also never gave known. me. Yeah. It also gave me answers as to when, how long ago she knew she was very ill. What wouldn't somebody want to know that? That's a huge answer. How long ago, how long did my mom know she was very ill? The answer's in the book. Because yeah. in the book, on the same day, she scheduled two appointments, eight months before she died. Mm-hmm. One was for a cremation facility to do her pre or do her arrangements. And the second one was to a life insurance company in the same day. So I knew that as of that date, She knew she was terminally ill and just didn't want anybody to know, but she was trying to get her affairs in order. It's just crazy. Honestly, it's crazy to me. She didn't want to stress you guys out or nothing. That's crazy. She held it all in, you know? So anyways, guys, sorry about the tangent, but I just felt it was very validating. Last night, I just got goosebumps again about the book, and, and I remember how that came up in a reading, and... I wasn't able to validate it for the for the psychic during the reading, but he told me it's very important. Remember that it's gonna mean it's gonna mean something to you at some point. That happens very often. Tyler Henry said that yesterday wow. as well. He said a lot of the things that I'm telling you guys now it might come to you later. Like oh my gosh, that's what he was talking It'll about. Click. Yeah. yeah, something to make sense. So he's got a second book. I can't wait. I'm gonna download it on my kin, um, Kindle because I want to read it. Basically, he just went on, the consciousness lives on. Um, He answered, you know how, like, I've also talked about how it kind of messes me up when I try to think about it. I'm like, but wait a minute. But what about if the brain is gone, where's the personality? Yeah. Like, are they still themselves? Yeah, how's this energy? And he said, because the brain is just part of the body, and the body is temporary. Yes. The brain is part of the body. Yes, and Sometimes the brain alters consciousness on this earth so someone has mental health their true self isn't coming through because the mental health blocks right facts but because the body is flawed the brain is just like a flawed heart a flawed lungs sometimes it's flawed but in on the other side no flaws no flaws they are their true self their consciousness lives on the consciousness is what is eternal the body is a temporary vessel Mm -hmm. because we're here on this earth to fulfill a purpose yes and it all makes sense in the in the afterlife. It, it gave me a lot of hope, and I loved it. Because and this is just a temporary life. The afterlife is, you know, no vessel. So who knows how long you're going right. for with your conscience. It's Right. I don't know. It's It was... Mind-blowing stuff. It was mind-blowing. So anyways, um, and it also made me just think... I'm going to end it on this topic because I know that this is hard for some people who are super religious. And I don't want to, like, alienate our audience that, you know, might, you have your certain beliefs. Everybody is entitled to their beliefs. I don't knock anybody for what they believe. I also, in my heart of hearts, I feel like we all have the same beliefs in some way, but that religion is different cultural 
um, like explanations for the same thing. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. It, it's almost like I we're all kind of in the same realm of a creator and and an I afterlife. A, I believe in a creator. And and. And spirit guides or guardian angels. I think that it's almost just like it's our own interpretation of religion. Is just everyone's individual own interpretation with their own nuances or whatever about what created us. But it's not to say that anybody is really right or wrong because I don't think we none of us really know until we're on, on the, the other, other side. side. That's it. So that's why you can't judge. You can't judge people for their beliefs. Speculate all you guys yeah. want. So you're on the other side? Yeah. You can't talk. And he explained that too. And I, I like that he did that because that's a... I've always thought that. Like, well, don't mediums know exactly what it's like then? Because they have... He said no. I. He said that... No, they're not on the other side. He doesn't know. No. He said that it's almost like... They're here. He tried to describe it as like... I wouldn't they don't they don't tell you because we couldn't even comprehend. We don't have the capacity on earth to comprehend that. It's almost it's like if right. somebody trying to teach Vietnamese language to a newborn baby. Can't even I it's impossible because it's too much. Yeah. They got to learn English first and they yeah. got to go through life first and then yeah. they can maybe learn a second language. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So yes. You're it's, making a reference to an American-born baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Like a, it's like teaching a second language to a newborn. They or, don't even or, have or a first they language. They said even like the hardest characters to learn are Chinese characters. Try to learn in that. Try yeah. to learn how to write. You know, yeah. So it's kind of like I see what you're saying. You gotta walk super before you run. And, yeah. It's, it's we're not able to understand that. It's too complex, but it makes sense at some point in time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was my birthday year in the making, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I would definitely go to another one of his shows. I loved the way the format was. I thought it was very fair. Anyone was potentially could get a reading, no matter even if you had the nosebleed seats. That's cool. Because it's who came through, who had a powerful message. Um, but there was some pretty mind blowing stuff. Um, did my not to get off topic? Did my mother come through one of your readings? Yeah. Once? Yeah, Your own so personal reading. Yes, yeah, so in the last one, he in the most recent reading I had, he had a lot of people coming through. Of course, for me. you would. And he said that there was a maternal figure that was not directly connected to me, very strong presence trying to come through, but he felt like it was she wasn't like she was a little far removed from me. He said probably like a mother in law, whatever. And I said, yeah, yeah. But my father in law, my former father in law, came through, which was really cool during my reading. Now I want to do another reading. I really do. Yeah, yeah, because you never know. You can't, you can't plan on who's going to come through. It doesn't work that way. Nope. No. No. Mm. Um, okay. So, I, I, oh, my hot coffee topic is kind of like trivial social media stuff. But I wanted to say that I had a um, video go viral on TikTok. Oh yeah. Nobody's yeah. gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they know? So I did a video. You know that company I'm working with, CRC. What kind of video is this? No, babe. Viral. Stop. It was on I'm TikTok. Joking. As it, the I'm clothes. Joking. I did a stupid video of with my CRZ Yoga because I'm working with that company now, CRZ Yoga. I did yeah. kind of like a silly video. Uh -huh. And uh, for those of you on YouTube, I'll <clears> pop it up here. Um, it's at. 1.3 million and counting. Man, what is it about video? We you, you've done them. I we've done them together, and they go viral. Yeah, like so I've had we've had a couple of viral videos um, before. Seven million on a couple of occasions. Yeah. This is the first time I've had a viral video over a million on TikTok. Oh wow! The other ones were Congrats. Instagram, and this one is a uh, yeah. So TikTok. that was kind of cool. But let me tell you what I do. This is what I do. Once a video picks up steam goes viral, it's time to ghost. I ghost it. Ghost. I don't read the comments. I don't. Nah. You get the stupidest people coming out of the woodwork. It's like, relax. It's not serious. It was a joke. I'm joking. It's like for fun. Uh, can't you? Dumb. Isn't that one of your irks or can't stand when people can't take a joke that's so serious? I got to plug up I their know. ass. Like, yeah, yo, like, it's a joke. Yeah. Are you, are you not keeping up, catching up? Are you slowed down? Which one is it? Like, come on. It's a joke. I can't stand them kind of people. Like, dude, 
It was yes. stupid. It was about... <laughs> So it was, I have, CRZ Yoga is is a brand that has a very similar quality and designs to Lululemon. Very similar. So I poked fun in that I had a sweatshirt that looked very much like a Lululemon sweatshirt. But the only difference, or one of the differences was the Lululemon sweatshirts have a hair tie Lululemon attachment to the zipper. So I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I went and bought hair ties from Lululemon Mm-hmm. And I put it on, and, and I'm not going to take credit for this, actually. I I had originally posted this sweatshirt on a YouTube short. And I need to go back and find that person that gave me the idea and let her and send her to the video. Yeah. Because she said, hey, you should put a Lululemon hair tie on it. I was like, that's such a good idea. Oh, wow. I'm going to try that. I replied to her. And um, I need to find what video it was on. So I did it. and I But I did a funny video take on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I just said... Um, but what? And who's going to know? You know, they're not going to know. But people took it like, like you. There was two sides of it. And people literally started arguing with each other in the comments. It's oh, ridiculous. My, my there was half the too. people who said, oh, what kind of person are you that you need to feel like you're wearing Lululemon to feel good? Okay? Mm-hmm. Stupid. And then there was another part of the people that, there was a lot of people who loved <laughs> it and said, oh my God, I'm going to do this. Then there was other people that thought, how could you do that? That's like... Um, blasphemy. blasphemy on Lululemon, and then there were people that, why would you even care if it's Lululemon? That's so much money. And then there were people that, why would you buy something that looked like Lululemon? That's such a fake. That's such a phony. I mean, it was ridiculous. Here's here's the thing. When people argue online like that, there's something going on Something's in their wrong. cabeza. Something's wrong. Okay. They're miserable. They're unhappy. Something. And let me just put it out there. Strange. I'm an ambassador for CRZ Yoga, but I still love Lululemon. Yes, you do. I will continue to wear both. I do feel that Lululemon is very expensive. It is. And Keep it's it nice real. to find a brand that I love wearing. I do not care that it's not Lululemon. I do not need to pretend that it's Lululemon. I have plenty of Lululemon. I got yes. a shit ton of gift cards for my birthday of Lululemon. I will yes, be purchasing did. more things. Yes. But it is nice to have an option, especially with having to work out and you go through a lot of workout clothes that is more affordable that's still nice and you know the hair tie thing was a joke but hey guess what did I leave my hair tie on the sweatshirt yes because I actually like to have that on the zipper pool mm, smart okay yeah. so there's that that's my hot coffee cheers to cheers to the haters that's and the hilarious. people who have way too much time on their hands you know what I mean not, 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 not everybody can afford a lemon sorry not everybody has money it is expensive I went in there looked at the men's stuff like I can afford it, but it, no, nah, it's expensive. But it's expensive, it though. It's expensive. It's expensive. So, like, I, the things that I use, like, every day, like, that will get worn out, like the sports bras and stuff like that, I'd much rather use CRZ Yoga. Like, maybe I would get, like, a jacket from Lululemon or, like, the nice sweatshirts or something that I just really love from them. And I do I think that I will buy less stuff from them now that I have the CRZ Yoga brand that I love? Yes, Absolutely. I yeah, feel like, of you know, Lululemon will kind of probably be reserved for for gifts. I mean, to be honest, most of the time when I buy Lululemon, it's because it's a gift. Yeah. I, I got gift card. cards for Christmas. Yes, you did. Your birthday. For my birthday, for, like, occasions, I get Lululemon gift cards, which is always a good idea because I always find things, <coughs> and I love Lululemon. But anyways, I digress. That was just stupid, but, hey, I'm happy for the, uh, it was great brand exposure for CRZ Yoga, too. Yeah, right? Who like, would have thunk it? You can't plan these I things. I tagged them in the video. Yeah, the you video, can't plan it for it to go viral like that. It no. just took viral and then they got all these people arguing. It's, it's, it's hilarious. Gr- and it's brand awareness. Yes. Because I think brand I've talked awareness. about this before. Not all press is good press, but some amount of negative press, some amount of controversy is good. Yes. Because now I've got 1.3 million people have now put eyes on... The fact that I wrote CRZ Yoga has the best Lululemon dupes. You don't think they got a shit ton of of action off that post? Yeah. 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 Now you now that people really know who they are. Now mm-hmm. and that post is still going viral. It's not like it's gonna stop. No, and now it's it's out there. Yeah, it's out there. It's just it's out there. It's in the it's in the internet universe. Um, all right, moving on, I wanted to talk about the um oh first of all, before I move on Coffee breaks, guys. Those are still those are still happening. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that I think I had what was my um, hold on. I decided what the next coffee break topic was going to be, and now I don't remember it. Oh, 
Coffee Break this week. Stay tuned for it. It's going to be the effects of aspartame and artificial sweeteners on our gut health, on our weight gain, all of that stuff. We're going to talk about diet. We might have to have a coffee break with Diet Coke instead of uh, coffee. Sure, we could do that. Might have to cheers it's our to some Diet Coke. favorite Cokes. beverage. Yes, for sure. Um, so, anyways, mm. stay tuned for that. If you're not already following us on YouTube, um, head over to YouTube, follow us there because you're going to get the visuals. I, especially with the coffee breaks, I will always, they're very topic, topic specific and I will often use infographics and stuff like that when we are going into that. And um, for more behind the scenes on my birthday weekend, I did vlog the birthday weekend. So um, every Tuesday I post up a vlog and so that will be going up on YouTube on Watch Tuesday. Vlogs, you guys. So take a look Check there. All right, now we are officially moving on and we are going to talk about um, seed oils, are oils bad for you? What oils should you avoid? Good topic. Things like that. Because people because don't know, really. Here's the thing. For the first, first and foremost, I would like to say that the problem is people hyper-focus on ingredients, granular details before yeah. they have figured out the general stuff. Yes. Okay. It's, it's hilarious. Because w what I have realized in my research, in my readings, in my... I'm, I'm actually a member of, a, of a, a website that breaks down research in layman's terms. And so I'm, I read a lot of studies and things like that that's kind of like easier to understand. It's a really cool... It's a really cool, cool thing I'm a part of. For It's for like fitness professionals to really understand research and studies and things like that. So that's kind of Your where I get. The game is always evolving. A lot of my information. Yes, because you have to understand. Just because maybe I say something a year ago, my opinion on that might change a year later based on the latest and greatest studies, randomized tests, things like that that, mm -hmm. are, that are done. Because a true professional in the field of fitness and nutrition or whatever... Their views should ever be evolving. Always. If your views do not evolve, it doesn't mean you're always right. It means you're stagnant. Yes. You'd have to, you should question someone who never says, you know what, I've changed my opinion on this. Because let me tell you something. I was in the fitness industry, what, how long ago did we get together? 12, 12 13 years 12, ago. 12, 13. Mm -hmm. I was a trainer like 15, 16 years ago when I first got in the business. It's way different now, I'm sure. New research, new data, new everything. Training methods, better nutrition, recommendations, better vitamins. Just everything. The game has changed, you know? We're yeah. always evolving. We are. Think about it. Humans 12 years evolving. ago, what did our phones look like? Our right. phones look different, <coughs> right? Slow. So, wah, come on. Wah, wah, yeah. Anyways, so the, the messaging on fats has changed a lot, too. It, but what I've realized... What did you say, fats? Fats. That's what we're talking about, fats yes. and seed oils and mm -hmm. things like that. Lipids. What, but what I've realized is, at the t very top, if you're hyper-fixated on things like, how much of this fat should I eat? I should have avoided this ingredient, avoid that ingredient. But you have not, on the top level, controlled your calories and worked on you know, get, getting into a calorie deficit and reducing overall body weight, you are skipping way, way, way ahead. We call that in fighting, you're, you're, you're skipping the basics. Right. The basics is what gets you everywhere. You have, right. You can't skip the basics. Because a lot of the issues, and I think this is the most important point that I want you guys to get from this episode, a lot of the issues with things like seed oils, hydrogenated oils, mm -hmm. different types of fats, are overconsumption are, you know, in excess. Yeah. And when you are incorporating a healthy, balanced lifestyle, uh, an adequate amount of calories for your goals, but not a calorie surplus, you're either in, you're, you should either be a, someone who's maintaining current weight or working on losing weight for the most part, or if you're underweight, working on gaining weight. But if you, if you have not figured out your calorie intake for your goals and you're hyper focused on ingredients you're you're skipping way ahead you're way out, you're way you're way off the beaten path a lot of the problems that people encounter 
come from overconsumption of different things. Yes. And those different things become vilified. So yes, and, and I'll skip right ahead, right to the to part that everyone knows. Hydrogenated fats, they're oxidized and they're not great. They cause inflammation. And in excess, it's a problem. What are the what are high, what what are the foods that have hydrogenated fats? Go ahead and look it up. Do a Google search. Yeah. Hydrogenated fat, so look fats. Up. Look up images. What's going to come up? Donuts, ice cream, French cakes, fries, fries fried foods, corn, whatever. Corn dogs, fried right? corn dogs, all, all the... Okay. If you are living a healthy lifestyle, controlling macros, getting in your protein, staying within a certain calorie allotment for your goals... You are not going to overconsume those things. No. So just by doing the basics, the general stuff, not even worrying or fixating on looking at the ingredients of everything you eat. Yeah. Because you are eating in moderation, you're not overstuffing your machine. You're already doing those things without having to worry about them. Exactly. You're already doing those things in moderation. I know that I eat um, hydrogenated fats in moderation because... Six out of seven days, I don't, I don't touch junk food like that, yeah. or not a large quantity, because it's, it's all relative to how many calories something has, right? Yes. And those things are very calorie dense. So if you're monitoring calories, you're not going to overconsume those things. Very true. It's only a problem if you live a free-for-all life and every day, Monday, you eat fried chicken yep. and cheesecake and Tuesday, you eat french fries and a cheeseburger and Wednesday, you have pizza and donuts. And thir- if, you live, if you live your life going through drive yeah, yeah you're going to consume one, a lot of hydrogen You're going to be in fats. a calorie surplus, so your problems are way beyond just the fat content of that food. Yeah. And I think that's the thing also people need to understand when it comes to fats and how much you should consume them or whatever. There's not a there there's not a huge significant impact to your health when you take calories out of the equation. The thing is fats are very calorie dense. Yes, but they are. we need them. Yes, we, we do. We do need them. For brain function. They're essential. Very essential. You know, but the, the, the difference is yes, you know, obviously you don't want to get your essential fats from hydrogenated fats. That's not where you're gonna get the benefits, but if you consume some hydrogenated fats in a controlled, you know, moderate lifestyle, are you going to be okay? If you're not, you know, you're not overweight, you're not, you know, dealing with other issues, you're not in a calorie surplus, yes, it's going to be fine. Everything in moderation. And my, my point is I just feel like people skip to worrying about things like that when they could fix a lot of problems just by keeping it real general first. Mm-hmm. Get your body weight down. It's going to correct a lot of issues. And then you can kind of hone in on what you need to now focus on. You can yeah. skip to another layer to clean things up further. Like, for instance, right now, you know, if I, I'm feeling healthy, I'm a healthy weight. I'm not, I'm not overweight. I have no symptoms, no health issues or whatever. But if I go to my annual checkup and I do my cholesterol... And my LDL is high. You know, it's like, hmm, maybe I'm having a little too many treats. Yeah. You know, because saturated fats are going to contribute to, you know, maybe too much saturated fat. Maybe I need to cut back on that because that's going to contribute to higher levels of LDL. But now there's been studies that that say that saturated fats don't contribute to heart disease. Oh, see, so it's changing. It's changing. Medical science is always changing. It's changing. If you if you remove the fact that if somebody is not overeating, because it's compounded issues. It's issues when somebody is overeating and in a surplus. And not only are they in a surplus, but the surplus is all of the hydrogenated oils. Now they are gaining weight and they have inflammation by all of the hydrogenated fats and the fried foods and the you know, yeah, all of that, yeah. then all of it's a compounding issue. Yep. But somebody is living a balanced lifestyle of a healthy weight that incorporates those things in moderation. Is it going to affect their health? Probably not. Yeah. But then if you're not doing a lot of bad things, if you're doing some quote unquote bad things for balance, it's very easy to pinpoint what the issue is when you do have those annual checkups and those markers and things like that. Yeah. 
You got to watch it, man. You can't just go free for all and be loose and think like, I'm just going to eat whatever and then blame it on certain things. No, it's you. You're over I mean, one of the main issues, the one of the main issues with fats in general, seed oils, because seed oils is where we, you know, it, they're, everything is very calorie dense and those a lot of the things that we love to eat are made with those, you know, yes. bad fats, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. But the, the real health issues come with it's because it causes us to be in a calorie uptake causes us to be in a calorie surplus and yeah. that's where like i said the compounding issues come moral of the story is stop blaming the oils stop yeah so like i was reading a study the human trials show that when um when polyunsaturated fat when fats are substituted that the effects are neutral the effects of inflammation are neutral so if, if the poly is uh, substituted with saturated or whatever, they're kind of interchangeable when calories are controlled. Interesting. There's no like compelling evidence to suggest that the different fats have a significantly different impact. When calories are controlled, that's the most important thing. When calories are controlled, remember that. It is important. Because then you can really... You can really monitor, you know, when you're loose, you don't know. You don't know. When you're loose, There's no way. There's no you know, if you're tracking your macros, like, for example, with my clients, while I tell them to say, look, when calories are controlled, you don't have to worry about fats and, and carbs. But I discuss, but because naturally, because it's just easy to do, we kind of just get, unless we're trying to be fat free, we naturally will get enough fats for the essential, to cover the essential part. About 20 to up to 30, but like 20 to 25% of your total calorie intake should come from fats. Very easy to get there because fats are very calorie dense at nine calories per gram. So I tell my clients, don't worry about tracking fats because you're getting there. It's, it's very hard unless you are trying to be fat free, which you shouldn't be. No. Um, so if you just control your calories and get your protein goal in, there's not a lot of calories left to overconsume the bad fats so you won't overconsume them yeah. but the most important thing and for the people who aren't doing that they don't have an idea of what their volume is they probably are overconsuming the hydrogenated fats cuz that's where the good stuff is that's yeah. where the highly palatable ultra processed foods come from the, the current guideline is that we should limit saturated fat intake to 7 to 10%. I mean, fat in general, But see, right now, right, why, why, when you said that, okay? I, I took myself out of our podcast and put myself in general population shoes. Shoes. What is she talking about? How much are we supposed to know? Mm -hmm. How much the percentage? So, yeah. Well, that's, that's, a good, people. that's a good question. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. And it all boils down to because you should know. Everybody should know about how much calories they should be consuming for their current goals. Yes. Whether your goal is to put on weight, maintain, or lose. Every single person, every adult should know this. Don't we know how many gallons of gas our cars take? You know why we know? Because we've been to the pump a hundred times right. and we've seen it from we empty know. to full. So we have an so idea. So we know, right? Yep. We, we need idea. to know this. Not enough emphasis is put on this. You're right. You need to know your body is your most important machine. Food is the fuel that runs the machine. How do you have this expensive, valuable, multi-million dollar machine yes. and not know how much fuel it needs to run it correctly? Yeah, it's true. How do you... That's insane I'm to gonna me. I'm going to go out and even on a crazier limb because I'm thinking about teachers. And what do teachers teach us? Math. as kids, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're teaching kids math, macros is just math. Yeah. They should teach it in school. I was about to say that. They should. 100%. From, from when they're young. You yeah. want to teach them every other thing that's not, they don't need in their life. Right. But you don't want to teach them to learn this so they could take with them for the rest of their life so they know. Exactly. 100%. Should know. It is essential information. It's like balancing your checkbook. You have and to know. You're going to learn. Trust me. You're going to learn because you're going to get hit with those late fees and this and that. Eventually, you're going to learn how to balance your checkbook. Right. I mean, it's just insane to me. So if you know, if you know the basics, then you would know. You know what that means to you, what seven to ten percent of your total calorie intake in saturated fats means. You would know what that equates to. Or if you're tracking macros, you'd easily see it in your macro tracking app. But it's so important. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to track macros. I think people are uh, they get intimidated. There's apps now, 
There's many tutorials. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you post it. Just and like I said, it, scale. Unless, go, to, go to Costco. They're like 20 bucks. A food scale. Yeah. Inexpensive. A nice one. I do macro assessments for clients. And then, you know, I give them like a tutorial, like on how to set like a free app up to, to get yeah. started. I, I'm just a firm believer that everybody should know this. Everybody. And you don't have to. It's not that complicated. Like I said, for the most, for most people. They don't people, want everybody to know this, unfortunately. But for most people. All you need to do is know your calorie intake volume and what your protein target should be. The rest will kind of work itself out. Yeah, exactly. So that's less overwhelming, a lot less than carbs and fats. And because, you know, it'll kind of work itself out. And then if you just know some general nutrition guidelines, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know what? Uh, limit treats. I know what a treat is. I know if I've had too many treats in one day. Come on. We yeah, know this. Yeah, don't be we know down. if I had a cupcake for lunch that I probably should skip the cheesecake for dessert. Exactly. You know, basic nutrition guidelines. You know what you're eating. You know what moderation means. Yes. And you, you know when going in hard means. Right. And, and you consumer. shouldn't restrict yourself because then you will want the, those things more. Never. And you will not have control over those things. You know, like I mentioned earlier, I had the butter cake on on um, Friday night at Mastro's. Yeah. I didn't eat the whole cake. I, I ate maybe like a... No. A, a fifth of the cake? Do we split it? A sixth it. of we the split cake? It. We had a we table of eight whole... people and every... Seven people and everybody had... A bite or two. Some cake. For sure. And I think there was even a little piece left on the plate. There was. So... You know but what imagine I mean? if you order that just for you. Many people probably do. Oh my goodness! And they eat the entire thing. I, I, we didn't even look at that. We should look how many calories that thing has. Oh my blow gosh! Our mind away. Let me look it you know, up. Now we looked up cheesecake. Their desserts. Yes. And we're like blown away. One piece of cheesecake, eighteen hundred calories. We're like, dude, for one. I'm glad I know that though, because it made me, it made me think about cheesecake differently. Like it's got to be really worth it, and I'm always sharing it. Look at it. Yes, the answer is I used to eat a piece of cheesecake by myself. Yeah. Okay, so let me see if I can find... It's right there. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's four servings per... They consider that piece they bring out four servings. So made for four people. And there is about 2,000 calories in that total, the whole thing. Oh, wow. So about 470 calories for a quarter of it. I think it's worth it. I yes. think that's better than um, Split cheesecake. It. Split it with the table. Yes. Yeah. Like you said, there was se seven of us, right? Or eight. No, seven Seven. Of us. Yeah, we, and there was still a little left over. Here's the thing. So if you and I went back there and we shared a butter cake, We're not we'd be eating a thousand calories each for dessert. Yeah. We never had it because we never usually do dessert. That's just overkill. But I know. It's but good. I will definitely have it again. It was your birthday. You yeah, I want to go back. I want to go back. That's going to be my special occasion restaurant because I want it to be special. So like anniversary, birthday. Hey, did you but feel good the next day working out, having all those extra calories yes, in you? So you know did what? Did you notice it? Yes. You pay attention. I did. Stronger. What did you feel? I just felt good. Like on, like just. I felt on. And you had a drink too. I had a one, just one drink, yeah. but I felt. I'm like God. Why do I feel so good? I felt so strong, and I just. It's definitely because we had a late night dinner. Had a lot of stored glycogen. And it, I used it. Probably the cake helped, you know? Yeah, yeah. That cool. stored glycogen, you know, because I'm in a deficit. So mm -hmm. I definitely felt stronger than on my deficit days because that was a surplus day. Mm -hmm. I felt strong. I felt yeah. good. I felt like a little good. supercharged energy, huh? That's cool. Yeah. But that's interesting. So almost, two, not quite 2,000 calories, but almost. It's like 18 something. So that's worth it. You get it's more bang it, for your buck versus one single cheesecake. That's Yeah, and it's smaller. Yeah. Because the cake... Is big. Yeah, it's big. Yeah, it's a nice size. It's like the size of a um, a small, like a dessert plate. It's about the size of a dessert plate. Yeah. Like if you think about like um, plate, like a plate setting, a place setting. So that's that's a perfect like dessert is four people on the table, at least. Yeah. So I figure, you know what? If we were to go, say you and I went, and we would split, you and I would split half of it, and then we'd bring home half for Tyler and Alyssa. Yes. To share the other half. Mm -hmm. The other half. That's how we would do. I'm trying to justify it because you know I'm going to get the butter cake. Yeah. You know I'm going to get the <clears throat> butter cake again. I feel like I'm a new woman. Who would have thought? My mom is probably laughing, 
right now because she's like, what do you mean you're eating cake? She probably my tried to make life. you cake and nothing. My whole life. Especially those box cakes. You know, my that whole all life she tried to, to get me to eat cake those and I never cakes, did. The cheap ones with the frosting. My mother, I love when she made those. I never, never did. <clears throat> um, so anyways, remember this. And I, I saw, I heard a term when I was reading some of this research and some of these tests on, on fats is that... Um, there's not a lot of issues with consuming fats when you don't, like I said, when you don't consume them in excess and you keep it at around that 20% total fat intake, around 20, 25% of your total calorie intake, unless there's an energy toxicity compound. And that I love that it was referred to as energy toxicity, meaning overconsumption of calories. That's funny. I because I before. think that that sounds a little more serious. You know, like said again, I never heard energy that. toxicity. Energy toxicity. Because you know what the word toxic means, and I this I was going to save this topic for another episode, which we will dive into it because I think that the word toxic is overused. Because the word, the very meaning of the word toxic is like oh levels that are of high degree. Yeah. Because I think sometimes people get so afraid of certain things. Like, oh my God, that's a toxic chemical. That's a toxic chemical. Guess what? They're tripping. Everything is chemicals. Everything is chemicals. Chemtrails from the airplanes, people. Above your head that are going, that are flying out of here. There's chemicals but in there. Everything is chemicals, Sorry. but chemicals do not become toxic unless individual chemicals, we are exposed to them at toxic levels. Yes. So stop letting people fear monger you into thinking that everything has the word chemicals and toxic is kind of like the way people use the word hormones. Oh, it's my hormones. It's so yeah. general. Yeah. Oh, it's the chemicals. Just throw it around now. Everything's a chemical. Didn't you guys take chemistry in yeah, high no. school? We're chemicals, like you the, guys. The, the, the cells table? in our body. Everything. We're made up of chemicals. Yes. Like chemicals are everywhere, and they're not all toxic unless we are exposed. To toxic levels. I think of toxic in my brain when you say I word like poisonous gas. Like it, like it's real serious. Not, oh, there's a toxic chemical. That no, man, come on. Relax. But again, it's, like, it's based on our exposure. And so, yes, where we have issues is because the way there are more chemicals in society and things like that is the cumulative nature to our exposure. Because maybe we use one thing that has a chemical in it that's not toxic in low dosage, but you compound that which we're using 20 different products and they all have that chemical. So now our exposure is higher. You know, I can definitely see where that's an issue, but I still feel that the word toxic is used loosely, but truly it's to represent that something is at high levels, high enough levels to cause damage. And that's why I loved the terminology energy toxicity toxicity because it's toxicity. meaning that you are consuming high enough amount of energy amount of calories to cause damage to your vessel yes and they're slowly doing that and we see it every day when we go out and about running there and just it's sad what we see out there it's like mm -hmm. dude and guess what energy toxicity can also be accumulated with things that we deem to be healthy because energy is energy, right? Yes. If energy you're in a surplus, energy. if you're consuming too much, you can still be in an energy toxicity. But the thing is, you know, things that are healthy, people don't usually overconsume them. And that's why those things don't get a bad name. You mean like protein? Yeah, we don't overconsume. Never. We overconsume the highly palatable, hydrogenated fats that are, you know, oxidized, that, you know, create issues with our cells, that cause inflammation. Because those things are very, when you compound the fact that it is hydrogenated fat with the fact that you're over consuming it because the things that are, you know, have hydrogenated fat are delicious, donuts and things like that, very easy to over consume, then yeah, now you've got a situation where you've, in a calorie surplus, you've got that energy toxicity of bad fats that now you've got that inflammation. Now you've got inflammation and weight gain and you don't feel good. Mm -hmm. You want to work out? You, no. your, your knees hurt, your your yes. your shoulders hurt, your, you feel terrible. Yes, you're not in the mood. You're going to work out, motivated. so it's compounding. Mm -hmm. It's a compounding issue. But if you bring yourself all the way back, like hit reverse, back all the way out of the minutia that it's created on social media about everything, Yes. back all the way out. 
focus on figuring out what your calorie intake should be for your current goals. Try to get protein. And then layer in a few general things that you know about nutrition or that you can quickly learn about nutrition. Yeah, I want to focus on protein. I, w- I want to make sure I'm getting, you know, fruits and vegetables, More a nice balanced diet. Limit treats, but ha- but still incorporate them. If you do that, that on a very high level, just those basics, a lot of these other problems will resolve themselves. Mm-hmm. You won't overconsume the bad fats because you're monitoring the calories. You won't, you know, have a lot of the issues that are attributed to these things that have been vilified. You won't have issues with carbs because you're monitoring calories. You won't gain weight, even if you're eating bread and pasta and things like that. Um, but you're also trying to eat protein, so you're not going to overconsume the bread and pasta because you only have so many calories to work with. So that's it. You've, you're eating protein. You know, if you back all the way out, focus on the basics, you're going to fix a lot of the problems. So then, then see where you're at after that, and then you can, you know, tweak things based on what your feedback is, what your help, what your markers are looking like. Yeah. Maybe because of you individually, you're more susceptible to cholesterol because of a pre, genetic pre, you know, predisposition, predisposition to a certain disease or illness. right. But that's very individualized. Don't let people throw blanket statements out there that land on you that might not apply to you. And now you're wasting your time on something that's wasting your time. Hey, you know how you guys should treat this? I just got an idea. So your macros, right? Find out what your macros are, like my wife said. Pretend you fill out a credit card application you got approved. That's your limit. That's all you can spend every day. The problem is people are overspending. And what's happening is they're damaging their credit. I'm in the process of fixing my credit. I'm one of those. But guess what? I fixed, I'm fixed. i fixing it. I'm, I'm more than mm-hmm. way halfway through. Look at it like this. For those of you who overconsumed and damaged your credit, your, your vessel, you can fix that. You can repair it. It's not too late. You can, you can turn yes. it back. Little by little, turn it back. Just like that. Think of it like that. Like you're fixing your credit. Well, I'm fixing my, my vessel. Yes, exactly. Scale I love that analogy. Because mm-hmm. you can. And yeah. I don't want people to think. Sometimes I feel like Don't tap out. Don't tap out. They Trust feel me, like they're so far. Don't give up. Don't tap. They feel like they're so far out of Behind. it. Like, You're not. Oh my gosh, I'm never going to get out of this. I promise you, j- you can Dude. chip away at it. Chip away at it, yes. But it helps if you don't worry about a gazillion things. Just, yes. Just focus on very simple changes. Mm-hmm. You can worry about more details when that time comes, if need be. But there will be a lot of things that you won't have to worry about because they will resolve themselves. Yeah. And if for some of you do have a hard time figuring it on the scale, this is what I always say to my friends. They try to ask me a little general advice. I go, listen, I'm not going to get all into it, macros, this and that. Mm-hmm. Just be honest with yourself. Look at what you're eating every day. What can you do without? Mm-hmm. And then go from there. What that's, can you do without? And that's go from so there. smart. And that's little by little, advice. then you start eliminating. But that's the best way I tell people to start. But you got to be honest with yourself. Stop being, yeah. stop, stop pretending because you know what you're doing. Yeah. We all know what we're doing. But they'll have said, but it's my hormones. Oh, it's this. No, you better point yourself in the mirror and see how many fingers are pointing back at you. Your favorite saying. 